Uh, hi everyone, this is James from uh, Docklands Digi Digital Media. Um, I've had a number of emails from club members who have asked me how we were going to attempt to correct uh, a film clip that we had put together which was deficient in that it was underexposed deliberately and uh, how we would attempt to try and improve that. Sometimes it does happen, you end up filming something and then you think you bring it back and you think, oh man, I can't use this clip. I've spent ages uh, filming it, and and it, it's an unusual, unusual. I'm sorry, an unusable clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly uh, import the actual clip uh, that was prepared. So I'll just import that into the actual uh, bin uh, by selecting that and importing it there, and that's the actual clip. Uh, if I double click on that you'll be able to see it in the actual uh, preview window here. You can see the actual clip is uh, relatively uh, underexposed with uh, everyone's faces there almost in shadow there. Uh, forgetting about here because this is just a rehearsal here just to try and uh, create this underexposed effect but um, you can see otherwise usually you try and correct this uh, before you actually film it by making sure that there's enough lighting and, that, and then of course what you're filming against doesn't create a reflection straight into the lens which causes the aperture itself to start shutting down um, depending on the setting of course um, that you've got it on but anyway oops what's that coming up for switch that off um, what I'm going to do now then is to uh, t take that down to the timeline just by inserting it to the timeline and uh, you can see here it's on the timeline. So if I actually put, if I put the playhead um, in the position here, then I can actually see another preview on the actual canvas up here, uh, the clip that we want to try and alter. You can see that um, what I've done is I've already pre-toggled the link here so that I can select the video track independently of the audio track. Um, I'll show you what the difference is. If I was to toggle it back on, when I select this, it now has it's now selected both the video track and the audio track at the same time, and uh, I don't want to do that. So because I only want to work on the video track, so what I'll do is I'll detoggle that by switching it off. So I switch it off here, and now I can just select the video track on its own. Um, what I'm going to do also, so I've just noticed that off, is I'm going to duplicate this track by uh, right clicking and I say copy and then I will uh, switch off the toggle auto select button over here and then again right click again and paste uh, another copy of the track on top of the existing one. So I'm going to move that now to align them so that they're both stacked on top of each other as they are now. This is this is now the copy and this is the original. I'm going to now double click the original to bring it up into the actual uh, uh, preview up here and then from there I'm going to try and alter this sequence to to add a filter to it and and try and brighten this up. The reason why I'm going to do that is really to maintain uh, the dynamic range so that the uh, blacks and whites are preserved in the in the clip down here and we can play around then with all of the colors and the tones in between black and white so the effect of this will be shown in this uh, viewer up here so what I'm going to do first is select the top track go to modify come down to composite mode and set and select the add uh, add filter here and you'll see that the clip has immediately become brighter just up here now um, you've got to be a bit careful how much at the moment you can see there that's toggled to to the maximum 100% opacity um, and you can see here there's an amount of noise that's now been generated um, some flecky looking colors up here and I, what I'm going to do now to reduce that effect is I'm going to just reduce the opacity of the top video layer um, so that a bit of the bottom video will, will bleed through to try and reduce that effect and uh, what I've done there is I've actually reduced it a little bit so it still looks quite pleasing there. 
Um, right, now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a bit of color correction to that. So if I go to effects and I go to video filters and I come down to color correction and I select color corrector three way and you'll see here that the tab, a tab has appeared up here with color corrector three way and I'm going to click on that now so um, I can sort of alter this um, this Im image a bit and um, perhaps make it a bit more pleasing. I try to uh, color correct it so I've got this nice blue hue across the images. It's a very subjective look. Different people have different looks. Um, this is a look that I'm going to try and uh, put together for this particular video clip. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the, my blacks and then of course my mid-tones and over here my whites. Um, so on, on my blacks I'm going to just uh, adjust this and give the color the picture a bit more of a bluey tone towards like between my magenta and my blue and you can see here the image has already started to alter. I'm then going to have a quick tweak of my mid-tones by again just moving the colors so I can just bleed a bit of yellow and green into the image probably about there. You can see now how that's helped to soften the back of that image. And on my whites I'm just going to now just quickly give my nice bluey wash to it by flicking that control over a bit more. Okay, that's, that, that, that looks nice there. That's looking nice. Now you can see what's happened to the back. It's really softened the back of that. It's brightened it up so now the, the talent now stands out a lot better than it did before. Uh, actually, I'm just going to move it a little bit over a bit more now, okay? So that you can see now the image has really improved. It's really so that the talent now stands out a bit more. You can although see there that my shirt is more sort of a grey black more than it is black. So. Um, what I'm going to do is to uh, tweak that a little bit just by moving it sideways. Actually, before I do that, I forgot to tell you that you could also use to assist you this thing here called the video scope. I'll bring it up so that you can see. It's a very complicated looking thing here. Um, and it shows here, like, you know, my, my, my whites and my blacks, the distribution of that. And of course, this particular. Uh, one here is uh, it splits all the colors into red, green, and blue, and here is like a uh, histogram. Um, and over here, this is a scope which is technically all of these scopes added together, and it sort of shows me where there's a natural bias to a particular color. Um, um, as it says, like a pointing towards sort of my reds over here, and, and it's given me a nice because I've adjusted the colors a nice. It's pointing towards my blue over the, over here. Um, right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to alter my blacks just by um, just by tweaking it a little bit. So you'll see my shirt go a bit more darker. It gives much more contrast. Um, in the Final Cut, this tiny little button there. I'm not sure why they make that button so small. You can just about see it. But there's a tiny little button here you'll notice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that. And if you observe the picture, just click on that a few times until you can get it to the colour that you want, that so your blacks look black. So I'm going to do that now. And as I'm doing that, you can see my scopes are changing up here. Okay, my scopes are changing. So my black is starting to get, it's starting to saturate my, make the black a much more blacker instead of this grey black. So I'm going to just click on that a few more times. And there you go. Look, my shirt looks much more pleasing now, if you can see that on mine, much more pleasing. Um, now the effect of doing that though as you can see up here is is, is we have an effect on saturation so um, there's, a, there's a saturation slider here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to going to slide that over a little bit just so that I don't you know we don't look as red as much as, 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 as it is. I'm just going to sort of desaturate that a little bit. That's it just a little bit there. Now that looks a bit better there. Now you can see the effect of altering this desaturation slider here is that 
you can see um, the scope has reflected that adjustment and saturation by the colors now trying to merge itself sort of homing in towards zero over here uh, I'll show you the difference if you take a look at up here while I slide that right the way over look you can see it can you see it all diminished down there do you see that go down um, but that looks too washed out now so I'm just going to add a bit more color so I'm going to bring it back to where I had it which is about there um, that's about there okay so that you know that that makes the clip look a lot more usable now um, now I haven't finished there um, I think that's about right. I'll just add a bit more blue to that because I, I usually like my images to have this very nice blue washed effect uh, let's take the blues up a bit more okay that's the, that's the kind of look I want. That's the kind of look I want. Now I'm going to show you the difference between um, what we were given, what we had at the beginning. That's what we've got now after we've done all the corrections. And this is the clip that we were given. See, it's much more darker. And you can see, after we've corrected it, it's improved it quite a lot. I'm um, still not pleased with this look because I usually like everybody's used now to this very cinematic type look. Um, that clips have and I'm going to try now to uh, improve the look of this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip the bottom one and go up to the motion tab uh, click on crop and go to top and then crop the top by 10% go to the bottom of that clip crop that by 10% uh, and then you can see you can see this band starting to appear here uh, now let's alter the top clip Likewise, double click on it, bring up the uh, crop command in the motion tab. Uh, let's crop the top of the picture by 10% again and the bottom of the picture by 10% again. Now, when I look at the viewer, that's much more pleasing. It has this very cinematic look and that's the kind of look that I want in this particular sequence. I hope that's actually given you... Um, a bit of a, uh, an insight of how I adjusted the picture and like I've said um, this is what the picture looked like before and this is what the picture looks like after we have corrected it okay so I hope that's been useful to you if you've got any questions please email it to me and so this is James signing off on behalf of Docklands Digital Media Film Club thanks very much